can you can you talk at all about the importance of Harry's penchant for giving names to characters and objects in the story that, that didn't have the name before he took care of that? Um. The important. Okay, can I talk some more about? Uh, can I talk about uh, the important, the uh, the how important it is to Dresden to give things names uh, uh, when he doesn't have one. So if he doesn't have a name for something, or or it's just too difficult to pronounce, he can just call it Shag Nasty and leave it at that. <laughs> um, Dresden. Uh, well, in terms of him doing it himself, I think it's part of human nature. Uh, really, if we ran into something that didn't have a name, we come up with a name for it right quick. Um, you know, I mean, it's not, it's, and you can see this, I think you see this mostly demonstrated ably online a lot. It's not just enough to say that you got beaten by the other team. It's like, you got beaten by them while they were rolling on the floor laughing. You were raffle stomped. <laughs> uh, I mean, we come up with, I mean, we come up with these names for things, and especially in English, because English is such a thug language. We'll just, we'll just take from anybody. Uh, I think there, there's some sort of academy in France where they're like, okay, we have to approve or not approve the new possible words that we're going to have. English, no, we will make them up left and right, and, and I've, I've made up some occasionally, and, and you know, I think every family has a little bit of their own language that you know, they'll have some word that they've made up that has significance to them, uh, and not necessarily anybody else. Um, as far as, I, we need to name things. We need to, we need to understand what, what their role is. Dresden, in particular, is somebody who, is, who grew up without any solidity, without any concrete foundation underneath him. And I think that is probably a, a reflection of that in his character in that he really does need to have things ordered in his own head because they never are in the real world. Uh, and naming things helps with that. I always saw that as uh, another one of the Travis McGee traits that you borrowed. Uh, possibly. I don't know. Did he do that a lot? Maybe not consciously. But, uh, I don't know if anyone... Oh, oh I steal things left and right yeah. unconsciously all the time. It's, Bob the Skull is like my own subconscious in some ways. Uh, uh, and, and yeah, he would, he would merrily steal things left and right, or no, with no compunction whatsoever. Uh, yeah, every time I think I've come up with something bright and new and original, uh, uh, I find out I haven't. Uh, uh, you know, it's like I bought the skull. I thought that was great. You know, that was great and new. And you know, then I watched the opening sequence to Scooby Doo and went, oh, <laughs> like the very first thing in Scooby Doo. Do you have any plans to uh, make a sequel or make another uh, uh, ZOMG Zombie Apocalypse for City of Heroes? Oh, do I have any plans to make another uh, to make another uh, module for City of Heroes? Uh, uh, the, I, I wrote a I wrote a, a City of Heroes module called uh, ZOMG uh, Zombie Apocalypse, um, and uh, uh, Zombie Apocalypse Now is what it's called, and uh, where you have to go out and fight the zombies. Um, and it's, there's a lot of zombie fighting involved. It's, it's it's intricate. You'll just have to believe me. You just have to trust me if you don't play City of Heroes. Uh, I, I would like to write to write some more, except that I've got this editor. Uh, who, while being a, a perfectly sweet person uh, and, and just one of the nicest people I've ever met, uh, really does want to have her book in. Uh, so I, I'll try and focus on. I, I've got a. It'll have to be after this next this next project gets done. Yeah, you're upset enough about July. Don't make him push it back further. <laughs> I know, right? Not now, ever. I mean, you know, yeah, at some point I'd like to. Yeah. I mean, you're not making Codex Alera anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I do. <laughs> Greg. Yeah, um, it's actually an interesting question. Uh, thank you. Um, I was on a plane when I read the line, Harry, you stole a warden's cloak? And I cracked up laughing. And I was unable to explain to everyone that you had been building up that joke for about four books. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, because of you, I have met an airline. I've got, I've got my own TSA story to, to go along with that. Um, uh -oh. I was, I was going. Uh, well, I do, I do a lot of traveling when they send me on, a t on the on the tour, and I was on the tour last year, and I was coming back from uh, San Diego, and I've been get, and occasionally folks will, will come up and give me gifts, and, and uh, if they're small enough, I can accept them because then I can fit them in my stuff. And somebody had given me a hand carved, intricately hand carved oak wand. Uh, uh, apparently, on the assumption that I was that I was a Wiccan, but I, I thank them very kindly for it, and it's it's on my it's on my Harry Dresden swag shelf at home. Uh, but it had a pointy end, and the TSA they they stopped and they opened my bag and they and they they, they held up the wand, and the agent, very serious dower agent, holds up the wand, and looks at me, and says, "What's this?" And I said, 
it's a magic wand. <laughs> Obviously. And the guy, the guy kind of looks at me, and I, I look back at him and... <laughs> and apparently, I, I don't know, I don't know, because he could have given me really a really hard time. Uh, maybe he also assumed I was a Wiccan and didn't want to infringe upon my rights. Because uh, he just goes like, okay, and puts it back in the bag. Uh, Okay, well, okay, thank you. Uh, <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, uh, actually, Shannon uh, helped me with that one. She's been learning Martian for many years. Uh, and occasionally I can say, how you doing, honey? And she'll go, uh, which means, not so good, leave me alone. And I know that and she knows that because she's cool. You know, she's learned that for me. Um, uh, I, I've got I've got the boy, and uh, uh, has he shown an interest in writing? Um, his we did our first uh, Chan and I did our first like tandem interview over the phone one day, and he came he came home from school, and the dog made a lot of noise. We kind of had to stop the interview while that was happening. He's like what what? And they're like, what's going on? Oh, my son just came home from school. Do you mind if I ask him a question? No, go ahead. And he's like, they're like, what what do you think about your your mom and your dad? You know, they're both authors. I mean, that's really a remarkable thing. And and. And Jay kind, of, Jay kind of smiles and says, you know, if these two could do it, I, I really don't know how remarkable it could be. <laughs> Cruz is right on out of the room. I mean, he didn't even blink coming up with that answer. We're like, yeah, that's the boy. And uh, he's getting ready for school. He's, 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 he's originally thinking he wants to go into medicine. I, I think it's just because he wants to hear... You know, he wanted to be a trauma surgeon. I think uh, originally he, it was just because he wanted to hear Dr. Butcher to emergency. Dr. Butcher. I, I think that's what he wanted. And then he kind of got a taste of exactly what pre-med students have to go through and med, med students and interns and so on. And so uh, at the moment, I think he's working on computers. And he says, he says you know, I'm going to go to school. One, one night he sits down to me and says, Dad, you know, I'm going to go to school. I'm going to get this degree. And uh, then I'm going to decide I just want to be a writer. <laughs> I'm like, well, the hours are good. Uh, 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 and, and you get to wear great clothes. Uh, 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 as a writer, that's the best part of the job is I can do it in my PJs. Um, so who knows, he might be writing himself one day. I told him he has to read books if he wants to do it, though, and he's like, oh. Does he read your books? Uh, oh, oh, no, no. He read Alara. He read Alara because he was smart enough to understand that, that when I was writing about Tavi, I was writing about him, but... Uh, uh, who, other than that, no. He does. He likes the uh, gaming books. Uh, anything that's that's written up on, uh, you know, Warhammer Forty Thousand or Warhammer, he snaps those up. Uh, but other than that, in the back. I'll follow up why Chicago? Why Chicago? Okay. Why Chicago? Um, because when I turned the first chapter into my teacher, she said, "Jim, I, I know that I I told you to do something sort of similar to what Laurel Hamilton was doing because that was what you'd been suggesting, or you, that was what you kept holding up as, as what you loved. Because uh, uh, I really loved the, the I mean the first five or six Anita books, and uh, and she says, but uh, you know really you're close enough to what she's doing without also setting the story in Missouri. She says you can't use Kansas City. Find somewhere else. And uh, on the globe on her desk. Uh, there were four cities uh, in the United States that were on the globe, uh, or no, there were three cities. Uh, uh, one, or, no, excuse me, four. Uh, one was Washington D.C., which I didn't want to write because if you write something in Washington D.C., you have to write politics. If you write politics, you alienate half your audience at least. Uh, one was New York. I didn't want to write New York because uh, Fantastic Four and, and, and Spider-Man have, have got that sewn up pretty good. Uh, one of them was Los Angeles, which I didn't want to write because. I just didn't want to learn about Los Angeles, and uh, and the other the other the remaining city was Chicago, and I said, okay, Chicago. Can I use Chicago? I know it's on the I know it's on the river and all, uh, the same river as St. Louis. But can I use Chicago? She's like, yes, Chicago will be fine. That was why I chose Chicago, uh, because otherwise she would not have have let me have a good grade. Do you do you do a lot of travel to do research for locations? Um. Uh, I, I, I did. I did when I first started the books up up through about book.